Hi guys, welcome to another Key Shot tutorial. My name is Liam Martin, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my top tips for improving your workflow in Key Shot. Let's jump into it. First off, I want you to hit H on your keyboard to bring up Key Shot's head up display. This shows vital information about the scene you're working on, and in particular, the real time rendering view. I'm going to be referencing this at multiple times in the video, so make sure you're displaying yours as well. Firstly, I'm going to limit the amount of samples of real time render view you can do. To do this, I'm going to go to Edit, Preferences, go to the General tab, and where it says Pause Real-Time Render View After Time or Samples, I'm going to set it to 64 samples. What this means is in the real-time view, when it gets to 64, it's going to pause the render and free up the CPU usage for other apps on your computer. This stops things overheating if you walk away from it and accidentally leave the render running and allows programs to run efficiently in the background. While we're in this menu as well, if you want to go over to interface, we've also got the option to choose a theme. If you're currently using the light theme, make sure you change that over to dark. Not only is it much cooler, but it also is less tolling on your eyes if you're working in a darker environment. Lastly, you want to consider if you want Keyshot to run in glossiness or roughness. Keyshot defaults to roughness, but generally a lot of textures that you find controlling that are defined as glossiness, and so you have to invert them. So if you're using a lot of external textures to make materials, perhaps consider changing it over to glossiness. To do that, all you need to do is hit the tick box, use gloss instead of roughness for materials. When moving around cameras or moving around pins from a HDRI environment in Keyshot, I recommend that you use performance mode. You can access this by hitting performance mode in the top toolbar or by hitting Alt P on the keyboard to toggle it. In the scene that I'm working on without performance mode, I'm currently at 43 FPS. As soon as I turn performance mode on, it jumps up to 70 FPS, which means Keyshot is working quicker. HDRI pins still work well with performance mode, so you can position lights on your model while it renders quicker. The camera also moves around faster as well, and so it's easier to position things and then get an accurate representation when you bring it out of performance mode, so highly recommend using that. When moving around models or geometry, I recommend using the geometry view. This is also available on the top toolbar, or you can access it by hitting O on the keyboard. This brings up a new window, and so it allows you to move around models um, without moving around the camera in the real-time view. You can select models or go to your scene and select entire assemblies, and then use the move tool to position things around, and they'll move in the real-time scene. This is really good if you want to keep your camera the same and move things around. You've also got the choice to change between views so you can have shaded or wireframes the popular ones. And you can go and hit the camera icon, go to active camera, and even change around where the camera is in this geometry view. As I said, my scene not in performance mode is running around 40 FPS. You can see that in the head up display. If you've got a really intense scene with lots of models or high res textures, and this number drops below 10, it's gonna become a lot more difficult to work with key shot. I've had scenes where I've been below one FPS and it's been virtually impossible to work with. And so if you're in one of these scenarios, you need to employ one of the following methods. The first thing you can do is lower the resolution of the real time window. I've got a 1080p monitor and it's covering nearly all of that. The resolution is here. I'm in 1316 by 987. If I wanted to up my FPS, I could go to image, resolution presets, landscape, and I could choose one of the lower values. I normally choose the values from the top box, so if I wanted to decrease the resolution, I could go for something like 800 by 600. Note how my FPS is now at 114, so it's much easier to work with. At this low resolution, it becomes harder to work on the actual textures because we're not so close up. But if I want to adjust lighting or I want to adjust where the camera is, position of models, etc., it's really good to lower the resolution so Keyshot works quicker. The next thing you can do is increase your CPU usage. Now, generally, I recommend that people limit the amount of CPU usage Keyshot's got for the real-time view. Generally speaking, because you've got other apps open in the background, perhaps modeling software, Photoshop, they need a bit of your CPU usage when you run over to them. That said, you can increase it. So at the moment, I was running around 100 FPS. If I boot mine up to 100%, I've got the um, heat management to control that. Then I can get Keyshot up to 130 FPS so it runs a little bit quicker. The next thing you can do if you want to increase that FPS is use the render region. This is the best tip I've got for you today, so please utilize it. You can access this tool by hitting Control, Shift, and R on the keyboard. And now anything within that box will be rendered. Anything outside of it won't be. This is perfect if you want to focus on a specific part of the scene or model. You can drag this box around it. 
and then it will focus all of your CPU on just rendering this. For example, now I'm at 762 frames per second and I hit that 64 sample cap in one second, okay? So if I just wanted to work on this weld, that's what I would do and it would improve my workflow massively. Now, if getting high FPS on Keyshot isn't a problem for you because you've got a beast of a computer, you might wanna look at maximizing real estate for the real-time render. To do this, you can float the studios or whatever's on your left-hand side and float the project window, what's normally on the right-hand side. Then you can hit R and T on your keyboard and maximize the key shot window. I'm now at nearly 1920 by 1080 p which is a resolution of my monitor. And this is a great thing to do if you've got the horsepower to do it, or if you're working in a low quality scene where your lower computer can handle it. Next, I wanna turn your attention to materials. So most of you will know that all your materials from a scene will be stored in the material tab of your scene window down here, and you can click and drag those on and it will automatically link them. But you can also copy and paste materials by holding shift, left click on the mouse to copy. So this area here can left click and that will copy it. And then while holding shift, um, hit the right button on your mouse and that will paste it. Okay, so that's a really easy way of manipulating materials. Next thing to look at is multi-materials. For those of you who don't know, multi-materials are accessed here by clicking this button in the material tab of your project window. Here, what you can do is set different variants of that material that you can switch in between. So for example, if I wanted to set a different color for this aluminum for a different product option, what I can do is duplicate this or I can duplicate the material with links to textures. And then I could say, change the color to red. And then that's saved and I haven't altered the existing material so I can go back to this. This is brilliant if you've got different materials for the same part or if you're offering that part in different colors use multi-materials instead of going back and changing the color every time. Now let's talk about the material graph. It can be accessed by hitting the material graph button next to multi-material, and you can see straight off the bat that it's a bit of a mess. To organize this, I can go to view and then go to align nodes, and that will let Keyshot do some organization to organize the material graph. Now let's talk about previewing textures. For example, I've got this glossiness map, which is going into a color to number, which is controlling the roughness of this metal. You can see it in little patches dotted around. But it's very difficult for me to make changes to it and see the effect on here. For example, if I go into my color to number and start messing around with the input two, it's very difficult for me to see the effect that has. What's best for you to do is find the module that you want to know the output for and hit C on the keyboard. And this will show the actual output and how it's projected onto your model. For example, here I can clearly show the gray areas which are gonna show up more rough and the black areas that are gonna be more shiny. When you're done with that, hit C on the keyboard to come out of it and you should be using this generally for each module that you put in and you should be bouncing in and out of C to make sure that you're controlling those modules properly. When you're happy with the material, whether it's a multi-material or not, be sure to give it a suitable name. I'm gonna remove the hashtag five here and then I'm gonna go and save it. I can select to save it in a suitable place. So I'm gonna to go to metals, aluminium and textured and then hit okay. And it will save it there for me to come back to later uh, if I use it in a different scene. The next thing I wanna talk about is making duplicates of an object in Keyshot. Now, modeling software like SolidWorks has things like the linear pattern in there so you can duplicate things in a line. It also has circular pattern that you can do around a point. But Keyshot has these things built in as well. So if I select this model, uh, which is the Y form here, right click and go to make pattern. If I zoom out a little bit, I've then got this box here so I can make instances of this. Say I wanna have three copies in the X axis and three in the Z as well. And then you've got the option to change the spacing. So I'm gonna give it 300 in the X and 300 in the Z. Click okay. And then they're all in there, pattern nicely. And you can go right click, go edit pattern and jump back to it later to make adjustments. So it's really good if you've got things like a restaurant scene where you wanna pattern tables and chairs and lamps um, or anything where you need to make a pattern, definitely do it in Keyshot and because it's really handy and easy to control. The next thing I wanna talk about is managing your colors. I've changed these two parts in the model over to a red diffuse, that's a red plastic. And say, for example, this was a company's brand color. I might want to save this for later down the line. So what I can do is click and drag the new or old down into the color swatch at the bottom, and it will be stored there until I remove it. 
If I now click OK, go over to Specular, that red is still there along with the other colors that I've used in past projects. So this is particularly important if you've got branding work that you're doing in there where the specific colors that you're gonna be using a lot, definitely save them in the color palette at the bottom so you can access them more easily. The last thing that I wanna talk about that's just about Keyshot is using studios. You can access them by hitting the studios button in the top toolbar and it brings up this menu. To set a studio, all you gotta do is hit the add studio button and now you can make a studio by selecting which camera you wanna use, as well as environment, image style if you've got one, model sets and multi-materials for each thing. So for example, I can have my main camera for this shot. I'm happy with this new environment. Um, I could say model sets, I'll have it lying down. I don't want the default one. And then multi-materials, I can choose the red one that we've got. Now I can add in a new studio again. I can give it a different camera. So I can go top camera, go for model set two on the environment and image styles, we haven't got one, model sets, leave it lying down, and then multi-materials we could have and select the um, plain aluminium. And then as I switch between the two, it will change between all of those cameras and environments, etc. whatever you set down here, so that you don't have to go and change those when you change your camera. So that's really helpful if you've got a number of different shots that you're lining up to render out, and you don't wanna keep changing between those options manually. The last thing I want to talk about is live linking SolidWorks and Keyshot. Now I know you can do this with other bits of CAD software as well by installing the plugins, but I'm going to specifically talk about SolidWorks because that's the modeling program I use. When you install the Keyshot plugin for SolidWorks, you get a new toolbar, which is uh, here on my screen. And we've got four different buttons we can click in here. The first two are the only two that you really use. The options are send to Keyshot, which will create a new file and it will input this CAD model for you to render. The second option is update. So when you hit update, it will look for open Keyshot files and it will look for this model within them. And if you've made any changes to this, it will update. For example, if I made this fillet bigger, I could then hit update. And if it's open, for example, it is open in Keyshot. If I hit update, it will make that fillet bigger in the Keyshot file. So there you have it, guys. Those are my top tips for improving your workflow in Keyshot. There's some stuff that I haven't included that I'll probably drop into tutorials later down the line. But for now, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, get subscribed. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. There's more videos to come over the next coming days. So I hope you enjoy them and I'll see you in the next one.